My, my. I can tell you are a special one from a single glance. You have but to ask, and we can grant you a moment of pleasure. Don't be shy. An intriguing pair. Takes me back to my youth. More than interested, if you feel the same. <laughs> what do you think, silly? Love, of course. Hot and vulgar with me, or <laughs> sweet and sincere with my sister. Trust me, you don't want to miss my signature Mezzo Baranzan love trick. In that case, we will require two of you. And indeed, I suggest it. Because I have never seen a creature as fair as this pale bow beside you. <laughs> what a world. I never dreamed I'd be on the paying end in a brothel. But our leader here has made the dire mistake of failing to sleep with me so far, and it's a mistake I have been aching to correct. Perhaps you'd care for a little... Extra company. Oh, I suspect we shall be more than merry. Charming. There must be a sprinkling shower of gold first. <laughs> Coin. Let's go. This is thrilling. Quite the merry little party we have assembled here. In Cuella's all custom from our home, groups of five or more meet quorum to qualify as orgies. Four or fewer are simply a gathering, legally speaking at least. Shall we? I hope you're not afraid of the dark, my darling. I must snuff out the lights before we begin. It's all part of the experience. The room is bathed in total darkness, so there is nothing to distract from your ecstasy. The lady, Nim, moves your hand to where the clasps of her blouse lie. All right, sweethearts. You dare to dance with a professional. You'll get your desire. His skin is like lusted pearls, almost translucent and so delicately smooth. He's so perfect. It could move even the toughest soul to tears. Hmm. Nature used all of its powers when it sculpted you, Astarian. It's so easy to see why that body alone ruined so many lives. You haven't earned the right to stare at me like that. <laughs> None as beautiful as me. I hope you like a kiss with teeth, druid. <laughs> as long as you like to be caressed by claws, Astarian. For this, I feel we should be paying you. Astarian lavishes attentions on everyone present with flawless technique, unfazed. It's all pure instinct, but when you meet his eye for a moment, there's a look about him that reveals he's a million realms away. Give me a moment, for pity's sake. You've exhausted me already. We recover quickly, but not that quickly. <sighs> Even in the best of times, it's an oasis of pleasure and calm. In the city's chaos, with Baldur's Gate preparing for war, 
The caress feels like the final flicker of a beautiful flame before darkness falls. Oak Father preserve you. Indeed, thank you for inviting me. I hadn't realized you considered me a worthy accomplice in such matters. I hope you'll keep me in mind in future. Our time with those two drow was certainly bracing. <laughs> Takes me back to some youthful misadventures in the Underdark. It was a long time ago. I was a foolhardy young druid, intent on seeing the beauty of nature's unworldly fauna and subterranean glow for myself. Certain events transpired, and I found myself a guest of a noble drow house for a time. Well, something between guest, prisoner, and consort, perhaps. The passage of time has a strange way of polishing even the most arduous of memories into precious keepsakes. Had circumstances been slightly different, I may have been put to work in mines or killed outright. The house matron took an interest in me, and the patron also. They saw me as a novelty, perhaps. I was chained in their bedchamber for nigh on three years. Time can prove to be a trickster on one's recollections. What would be multiple lifetimes for others now separate me from my captivity. Perhaps I have lost perspective on what happened to me. <laughs> I am aware. Perhaps I put too much faith in my skills of negotiation, or want to see good where there is none. It would be easy to resort to nature's fury whenever something stood in my way, yet I cannot help but feel I would be sullying the Oak Father's gifts. Naive, perhaps, but I still draw breath. No, I shall not take you for granted, nor my own past. What is the point of long life if one does not make room for reflection? Lolf's noble houses are constantly at each other's throats, and eventually, the house that held me fell out of favor and was attacked. It was chaos. Drow against drow, the clash of blades echoing throughout the caverns, the feel of warm blood that I could not see. I took my chance and fled while all were distracted. I never looked back until I breathed fresh air again, and never learned what came of my hosts. <laughs> <laughs>